Hello lovelies. Happy beautiful Sunday. It is absolutely, positively, unequivocally gorgeous. Let me just tell you. I cannot even tell you how amazingly gorgeous it is right now. It is just powerful. It's beautiful. And, um, you know, it is one of the most beautiful things about life is, you know, um, we get to enjoy the breeze, we get to enjoy the days, we get to enjoy the presence of others, you know. So it is definitely something that I'm just very excited with this morning. Hey Michael, good morning. Actually, it's afternoon here. It's 12 o'clock noon. And as you guys know, this is my show called Live with Carla Nicole. Um, this is a part of my spiritual mission. It is a, um, a part of my purpose being on the planet, which is to enlighten, inspire, encourage, and teach people the, the point of why life is so joyous but yet sometimes we make some detours don't we <laughs> we make some detours hey bobby we definitely make some detours in our lifetime unfortunately but at the end of the day um when we when we make some changes and and we hey nina when we make some changes and we we do better for ourselves um life just gets to be more and more fulfilling if you will so I hope you guys have your your pencils and your papers today I'm going in today is going to be one of the first times that I have to really say that I am going in today hey cousin I miss you and love you give the family my love I'm so glad you're here for the wisdom love you know how we do it's, it's it runs in the family you already know what's up Giselle good morning beautiful how are you so glad you guys are here man it, it makes it's humbling because you know um, I do this as my spiritual mission but I also do this to inspire and when I do this you know I learn a lot too I learn a lot from what you guys feed back to me so please don't hesitate to interject you know uh, talk to me let me know what's going on in your hearts and minds and and even tell me some things that you know um, actually correlate um, with with what's going on you already know Nina I'm going in today so get your pens and papers um, this is going to be very important this is a very vital 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 episode um, and it's it's about the power of consciousness I'm sorry about power of conscience our conscience what is it with our conscience do we have one <laughs> I guess should be the the biggest thing we need to be concerned with and very much um, always being ready to uh, sharpen it make it more revitalized make it more um, you know it, it let me just tell you this the conscience is what harbors our ethics our our morals it harbors our rights and our wrongs so it is our filter so I want you to think about that for a second you know in life you know we have what you call an inner soul an inner soul an inner voice um, and I'm gonna bring this up because I know a lot of you guys can relate to this how many times have we said I should have listened to my first mind why didn't I do what I first thought when it crossed my mind I should have listened to my first mind our first mind is our conscience believe it or not it is our voice to tell us what's right and what's wrong and you know as we get older and we get more affluent and we get more you know revitalized into our adulting we have a tendency to get kind of you know I don't know we get kind of uh, judgmental of others very easily can get judgmental of others and we don't really we don't really think about it as being judgmental but we are but I want us to 
take a pause off of our own judgment of others and start to really reflect on ourselves. So first I want us to talk about what is a conscience? Well, the conscience is the inner voice in you that tells you something is correct or incorrect. Something is of right standing or wrongdoing. So if you are going and moving and in motion in life and you're thinking about stuff that you want to do and I'm saying that anybody can have a moment of you know discontent anger bitterness revenge uh, we can get angry we, we can get we can say you know what I'm suspicious of what's going on all of those different states of mind comes from a conscience comes from here so in our conscience our conscience is supposed to now listen to this your conscience is supposed to filter through what's okay to go through and what's not okay so I want you to just just to think of your conscience as the referee of your life so your conscience is supposed to say okay that's cool to come in and then it could be like nah you can't pass through you can't do that so let's think about just something for instance um, we all I'm sure have had moments of anger where I'm gonna beat this person up or I'm mad I want to kill this person I want to sh you know I just want to shut them up permanently I'm feeling some type of way you know about how they're doing or what they're doing but something inside of us stops us from what hurting harming killing doing something that we will regret that's the difference and it's a thin line between conscience and just doing it anyway so there's many people that have cases that they're facing right now that had they listened to their filtered self that said don't do that it's going to cost you they wouldn't be in what now in hot water facing charges facing you know the death penalty or facing all kinds of stuff that they didn't have to face had they thought about well maybe I shouldn't be making this decision because this decision is actually going against my well-being you know it's easy to talk about something so strong which is murder you know murder is a huge thing murder is something that people you know could say I would never I could never you don't know what you could do depending upon the situation or circumstance but what I want you to think about is we need to make sure that our conscience is always focused on being able to decipher between the right and the wrong this is important see there's some people that live their life that can care less about what they do how they hurt other people they don't give a damn about if if their child is affected they can care less about how their actions will hurt someone else that's a person without a conscience that's a very dangerous person a person who doesn't care about their own actions uh, harming someone else is a very dangerous person so it's very mindful that when I talk about spirituality and everybody knows it's on my show they already know I'm a big person about making sure you develop you and you 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 go in as far as focusing on always being mindful of how precious your spirituality should be I say that for a reason your spirituality is the actual part of your conscience that really helps it is the vehicle to helping it maintain your very thin line of making a bad choice versus a great choice that's how small it is someone that killed somebody yesterday today this morning wakes up in prison is thinking to themselves how did I get here you didn't make sure that your conscience was mindful because see we often don't think about how forgiveness is so important remember I said before forgiveness is a practice okay so when you are practicing forgiveness when you are practicing forgiveness that means you need to be practicing how you are forgiving others 
You need to be practicing how you are forgiving yourself. If you're not practicing forgiveness, then you're not sure or certain that your conscience is able to filter through how to get past or how to focus on bettering becoming from the state of unforgiveness to forgiveness. See, there's a there's a very thin line between unforgiving and forgiveness. See, a lot of times we'll say, well, I forgive them. We'll say it on the surface. Yeah, I forgive you. I forgive you. But then we sit back and we harbor in on what they did. And then we keep replaying it over and over in our mind. And then we start to harbor on it. And then we talk about it. And then we add energy to, to the offense of what they've done. And in that, we say we forgave it, but we really don't because now we're fueling energy back into the offense, which is now causing you to have what? Moments of unforgiveness in your soul. See, unforgiveness is not that unlikely for many people. Many people will tell you they forgive you, but when you really sit down and look at it, are they? Because when you truly forgive someone, trust me, there is a level of care for their betterment. You're not harboring on thinking about, well, you know, that person did me wrong, so I'm hoping somebody gets back at her. Or you're not trying to even the score because there is no score to even. In unforgiveness, it is a, vi it is a volatile and a very, very vile, um, strong-scented evilness to it. So when we sit down and really think about the power of your conscience, you have to think about what is it that my conscience can give me that nothing else can. And I, like I told you, it's the referee in your life. So with that said, you have to make sure that your conscience really has some state of repercussions, consequences. So let's say, for instance, you do something that you know was dead wrong. There should be a part of you that feels bad about it. You should feel guilty about it. Some people may not tell you that, but I'm going to be here to tell you. You should feel, un it should be unsettling to you. You should have an unease about what you've done. You should seek to fix it and correct it when you know you were dead wrong. These are things that conscience, people that have strong consciences and, and they live on making sure that their conscience and what they do for other people or to other people cost them a sense of what? Peace. See, when you're not operating constantly on a revengeful state, always trying to get back at somebody, always trying to harm somebody, always trying to make somebody miserable. When you're not in that state, you have a level of peace in your life. But when you're constantly trying to focus on how can I get back at this person that hurt me or this person that did me wrong, how can I get back at them? Or you laugh at how they're, they're hurt or harmed in any way because you, you feel a joy to see that person hurt or harmed. It's, it's, not, it's not of a good conscience. Your conscience needs to now be purified. To purify the conscience is very easy, but it takes work. And when I talk about inner work, it's not hard to do. It just takes discipline to do it. The discipline that you need to put in place when you're talking about making sure that you're not getting so hung up on looking down your nose at others or constantly doing things that you know damn well is going to hurt that person or you laugh at someone else's being, someone else being distraught. There's a way to caress and change that thinking number one you have to begin to look at you and see why do I find that why do I find that joy in me see when you have a spirituality you got a God in your life you have you have something that that keeps you um, mindful of others um, keeps you compassionate for other people, makes you care about how you treat people. That filter in the conscience is very essential to have. If you don't have it, 
this is something you need to work on and you need to really consciously work on because it it's for for many people it's natural to care about other people very natural but if you weren't necessarily brought up to be a caring person or you were abused in some way or you had a a hard life life gave you a lot of hard knocks there was a lot of pain not to not to sit back and say well you know um justifiably they are the way they are because of this but i want people to get some understanding from why we end up having such a a a, a strong sense of lack to caring about other people to caring about what we do to someone else what is it in us that makes us think okay what i'm doing right here is wrong what i'm doing right here is right that is your filter that is your conscience and like i said if you don't have a conscience where you feel bad about something that you've done it is so important that you sit down and you think about my actions has hurt someone else in a negative way i don't care if it's a small hurt or a large hurt it doesn't matter if you hurt someone in a negative way it is vitally important that you sit down in that and you learn that this feeling of shame guilt unease anything of that nature you should not begin to get numb to or enjoy because if you do you will find yourself continuing to make bad poor choices to get that gratification from the wrongdoing of your actions i'm gonna let you sit on that hear what i'm saying if you do not have a regret for what you do in the wrong if you cannot apologize if you cannot say to yourself i've done something that is not right my conscience is bothering me you shouldn't be able to sleep at night if you harm somebody it should kick your ass it, it should kick your ass it should make you feel like dog shit. it should if it doesn't that's not good one thing that i've learned as far as with me being a parent I make sure that my children feel uneasy, uncomfortable, distasteful towards being liars, doing stuff belligerently to each other, to their siblings, doing something that's belligerent to their to their boyfriend or their girlfriend. I make sure that I'm mindful with my kids and I tell them, listen, that's wrong. You're wrong for that. And my daughter will tell you, I will tell her outright, you're wrong. She'll say, Mom, I know you'll tell me. I will tell you. You're wrong. And the reason why, and I think it's, it's very essential as a parent, that I tell her something's not in right standing. Because if there is a blurriness in her thinking or in her conscience, not really sure if she's doing right or wrong, I'm giving her that filter. I'm giving her that clarity. I'm telling her, you're wrong for that. You can't do that and expect to be and expect to be okay in your decision that you've done that so i'm a need for you to make better decisions on a better on a better realm of thinking see we don't have a we don't i believe as as human beings we need to be mindful about what we okay even with our children because that is habitual if i allow my daughter or my son to do stuff that is totally and completely wrong and okay it and not and even if the, in their soul they think it's wrong and i justify it i'm wrong i'm wrong as a parent i'm guiding them to what to just to be self-destructive to be a menace to society i'm wrong for that so i have to be mindful with my kids and i encourage all parents to do the same if your kids are doing something wrong or not not being mindful of their actions it's not right it's like no we got to get out of the thinking of oh i'm i it's okay because you're my baby no it's not okay and we need to be honestly seeking how do we make sure that we're mastering the power of our conscience because our conscience can keep us in or out of jail 
just to keep it 100% real with you on the larger scale. It can keep you in or out of jail. Number one, your conscience can. There's people that sat in jail and has killed someone blood in cold blood and has no remorse. How do you do that? <laughs> you have no remorse for it? And then there's people in jail that has killed on accident, manslaughter, and has huge remorse. So my thing is, the ones with the conscience would say, if I could do it again and do it over, I would never do this decision again. Well, that's important. I mean, even in our small cipher of thinking, in small terms, when we're trying to you know, navigate in this life, we gotta make sure that, okay, am I being mindful of my conscience being in right standing? Am I, am I sure of that? Let's see what Dietrich said. So Dietrich said that uh, it's hard to have a conscience if the raw materials needed are not provided. We have a lot of people who are self-absorbed and emotionally flawed, which can fester a lack of morality and consciousness. Some of that cut off, Dietrich. Oh, there we go. Um, live posts like yours can provide a stepping stone in the right direction. I, I appreciate that, love. I really do. Um, but again, you know, it's 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 important that we don't lose sight on how important it is that we have people that don't have a conscience be mindful that they don't have it. See, my concern is when we have when we have many people in our life and you know certain things are done, we have to we have to think about how is it that you do things and you don't feel bad about it. But we got to start them off young. Got to think about that. We got to start them off young. We got to start people off when they're young but if we have someone that's an adult and does not really have a a, a a clear conscience they don't really realize the peace they get when their conscience is clear now I want to talk about clear conscience for a minute write this down clear conscience means okay I want y'all to get this because this is very important it means that your conscience has a reflection that is showing that it understands the difference between the right and the wrong. So there's a clear distinction between your conscience. So what that means is you can be mindful of other people without hesitating. Not everybody has this because there are different personalities. And I'm going to pick on the narcissist for, for just a second. There are narcissistic personalities that can care less about anybody else but themselves. And with the narcissistic personality, they often don't have a conscience. Let me give you a little bit of a clue how you know when someone has a narcissistic personality. Everything they do is about them. They only care about themselves. Even when they do good deeds, nice things, give and seem to care about you you got to be careful because a narcissist is doing those things to get gratification for his self ego or her self ego to show look what I've done for them not because there is a compassion for you but what they care about is what are other people going to see about what I've done for you because the gratification is about me People that are narcissistic or people that are hateful have hateful personalities or they're someone that's always on a mission, very revengeful people, um, suspicious people, people of that nature, they have a tendency to care more about themselves than caring about you or any damn body else. They don't care if it's their mama. They don't care if it's their dad. They don't care about anybody else but themselves. So when you have someone like that you have to be very careful because a narcissistic personality is huge for being so like they can look the part they can look like they care they can look like oh my god this person really has my back but you got to be careful because a narcissistic person 
has a tendency to really care about only them. So they don't have a conscience. Now remember earlier I talked about conscience. When you have a conscience and you make a mistake, and whether it was a mistake by, you know, just by ignorance or a mistake by just not calculating properly or whatever, you have a, and you're a, a person of a clear conscience, you're going to be like, well, man, I shouldn't have done that. Or I wish I wouldn't have done that. Or I feel some type of way about how I did that. There is something about you in your soul that says, I'm the filter. Remember I said that the conscience is the filter, is the referee of your life. So it tells you right from wrong. So the right is here, the wrong is here. And so you're looking like, okay, I made a mistake. So now I have in my soul, I have what I call a regret. I shouldn't have done that. That is something you should have. If you don't, that's a concern. See, many people aren't going to tell you that because that's not something that's sexy or, or, or something great to talk about. Nobody wants to talk about how if I do something wrong, I feel a certain way. Nobody wants to talk about that. They don't want to talk about how it felt uncomfortable. I felt uneasy. I didn't feel good about me for doing something like that. Nobody wants to talk about that. But let me tell you something. I would have more respect for someone that did something wrong and said, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I feel a regret about it. I'm going to be more mindful the next time not to do that. I have more respect for somebody that cares about how they're, how they're doing or what they've done or their wrongdoing impacts someone else. Because you got to look at that. Hold on a minute. I make a difference. I can, I can impact in a negative or in a positive. So what, what, am I, what am I doing here? What, what, what am I really doing? I, I'm really harming this person. I'm hurting them. And if you have a conscience that you really, really want to pay attention to it, it's like, hold on. I didn't realize that I did that. You know, and sometimes, don't get me wrong, sometimes we might make a mistake and didn't do it intentionally and they still got hurt. You still should have some regret for that. See, I don't think people want to talk about how we should feel a level of discomfort when we do wrong. But, but that's huge. I would rather, I'm more concerned if my kids do something out here in the street and don't have no regret about it than them doing something and, and really breaking down, Mom, I, I did something wrong. I would rather them be regretful and, and asking me, Mom, what should I do? How do I do this? How do I, how do I fix this? Rather than saying, oh, well, I don't care. I don't care that I hurt her. She's done stuff to me. That's unacceptable. I don't care if someone's done something to you or not. That is unacceptable. If you're doing something outright to someone on a mission to hurt them, and you don't care that you are hurting them, something's wrong with that. Something's hugely wrong with that. So like I said earlier, yes, Satori, conscious is our referee of life. So like I said earlier, if you don't have a conscience, it's dangerous. It is very dangerous. And not only is it dangerous, it, it is not there to help you to learn how to forgive. You have to have a conscience in order to forgive yourself and in order to forgive others. Your conscience is what helps you to forgive. Remember, I said we got to practice forgiveness. Remember earlier, I said you got to practice forgiveness. In order to practice forgiveness, you have to have a conscience, which means you have to have a compassion for other people. You have to be mindful of what you're out here doing to other people. Are you hurting other people? Are you causing other people dismay? Are you doing things intentionally to hurt someone? Because if you are, this is something you need to correct and only you can correct it. And let me tell you something, a person with no conscience can cause so much headache, so much heartache, so much pain. And then what they don't understand is once you cause all of this stuff, you don't have a level of rest. See, when you have a peaceful heart, you care about other people, you do good things for other people, and you care about other people and how you treat other people, guess what happens? You have a, a whole new life of peace. You've got a life of joy. You've got a life of, 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 I don't know, just 
an, a, a life of ease, okay? So you have to be mindful that when you are really out here doing things with other people, doing things for people, be mindful that what you do does have an impact. What's your impact on others? Is your referee well trained or do you need to work on your referee? Does your referee need some training? Let me tell you something and I'm going to end with this. Our wrong and right standing in life is not that hard. But we must be mindful that when something is not right, that we own it, that we feel some type of way, that we have not been the best version of ourselves. Because it's easy for us to be out here doing reckless stuff and then, you know, like the mean girls, remember the old, old school stuff? when the mean girls was popular and mean girls could do what they wanted to do and it doesn't matter I'm a mean girl and I could do what I want this and that yeah you can but you don't realize what kind of karmic records you're doing for yourself I mean we gotta pay attention to this we're gonna be out here being wrecked on people and then you're gonna think that everybody's supposed to care about how they impact you in a positive way it's not gonna happen you're gonna take on more comic, karmic headache than you should. So it's very important that we got to sit back and say, okay, you know what? I, I, I think more people, and I say this often, more people that are alcoholics, drug addicts, sex addicts, any type of, has any type of addiction, are really trying to chase euphoria. Euphoria is peace. The best peace we can reach is meditative states that is the best peace you can make and reach in in the human realm on this planet we can reach the highest realm and the best means of being meditatively so that goes back to like i said earlier it goes back to your spirituality so like i said many alcoholics drug addicts sex addicts all these addicts are chasing euphoria they actually want peace. Think about it. Think about it. I'm sure all of us have had, you know, we've been drunk or we got high, whatever. You know that there's a level of euphoria. There is a numbness. There is a almost an elevative state, like where you feel like, I feel like I can feel no pain. I feel like I can feel no hurt, no bitterness, no. That's what they're, that's what they're looking to reach for. So in that state of being, which is euphoria, comes from the fact that people don't really pay attention to you can get to your highest state of being by being meditative. Period. And we have to sit outside of constantly trying to be bitter, trying to get at somebody, trying to be revengeful. Do you know how much energy you're taking on that? And then once you do your act, which, which whatever act it is, I'm gonna get back at him. I'm gonna get back at her. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, you can do all that. And once you do it, do you know how much energy you invested in doing that ill act to someone else to cause them havoc in their life? For you to sit up and prop your feet up and think you've done something great? That is not. That is ugliness. That is profoundly an ugly energy that you're putting on yourself and anyone else that's around you in your energy in your energy field that's not a good thing so we got to sit outside of that and say okay you know what i'm better than this and there should be a level of regret you should feel some type of way you should begin to ask your god for some forgiveness for what you're doing period good morning red man so you need to ask your god for some forgiveness for what you're doing you need to ask your God for why is it that I'm finding myself so uh, enamored and excited and, and really willing to hurt someone else. How can I do that and be okay in doing it and sleep at night? You've got to check yourself. You've got to check your mind. You've got to look at you and say, this is something I need to change. 
the power of it all, we can change. We can change for the better. It doesn't even take that much. But what it takes is discipline and it takes will. Do we have the will to change? I mean, really. We got the will to go out here and be revengeful, right? We got the will to go out here and be suspicious. We got the will to be out here doing bad acts and harming people. You got will to do that. Then you got will to be somebody that's better than that. And then, and, and one, of the, one of the best things I think, and I'm going over a little bit, but one of the best things that I think when people change is once they change, they then learn how to teach others how to not be that. They learn to teach people how not to be that. They learn to teach people their transformation and how their transformation changed their life. How they can now sleep better at night. How they can now change lives. How they can now make better choices. It's not that hard, right? It comes a time when we got to sit back and say, okay, I can do better. I can be better than this. But only you can change you. Nobody else can do it. You have to have the will inside you to say, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to keep going over there reaping havoc of my ex-husband or my ex-wife or my ex-girl or my ex-dude. I'm not going to keep wreaking havoc over my sister that got everything when I was young and I didn't get nothing. I'm going to start to forgive me. And in forgiveness and in the act of forgiveness, you have to let go of the offense. Remember I told you last time. Forgiveness is a practice. It is a practice. You have to do it every day. You have to learn to practice forgiveness. It is not something you can say, oh, I'm good today. I forgave. I'm good. And that's going to last me the rest of the month. No, you have to practice every day how to forgive. And then in your forgiveness, how, how can I be better at forgiving? How can I learn how to change getting a, a bad taste in my mouth over something I feel that's not to my advantage? Am I able to applaud someone else's gains? Am I able to applaud someone else getting a rise? Can I do that? Or am I jealous hearted? That takes forgiveness, man. But it also takes the conscience to help reference if you're really learning properly how to be in right standing in this lifetime. I'm not somebody that's going to preach and tell you everything is right and this and that because I've made my mistakes. But I am going to tell you the best way to be in right standing is by having someone truly be in your corner truly care about you and tell you like I said with my kids with Morgan and Braylon if they're doing something wrong I will be the first to tell them you are wrong you are wrong I love you but you're wrong right here as a parent as a as a mama it is my job to tell my kids they're wrong I'm I'm supposed to help develop their conscience but a lot of times we don't realize that conscience takes development we need to develop this. And when we sit into the thought of regret, there comes a what? Anybody I know, and these are, I'm telling you, there's a lot of, of mindful, beautiful people I know that really changed their life. It took them to sit in regret and think about, damn it, what, why did I do that? What can I learn? But like I always tell people, when you make mistakes and stuff, don't beat yourself up, but learn the lesson from it and then teach other people to not make the mistakes. And that's how we end up advancing in our life. That's how we end up getting our angel wings, man. We're, we're out here walking in life not realizing that we are angels on earth. <laughs> that's what we are. So we need to be trying to live up to that expectation by making sure that we're mindful on what is it I'm giving people while they're here how am i teaching people to sharpen their conscience their conscience i don't want you guys to feel okay with making bullshit i don't want y'all to think that's okay oh yeah that's okay go ahead and do all that bullshit that's cool no it's not i don't want you guys to think it's okay i want you guys to feel like oh damn i shouldn't have done that because 
it advances you in your betterment to where you're going to be in life. You're going to advance. You're going to be a stronger person, a stronger man, a stronger woman. You, hey, DA, when you, when you get to that point of saying, I'm a better man, I'm a better woman because I went through some hell. Yes, you are. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you don't want to keep making poor choices over and over again. You just don't. All right, man. I hope I hope I'm giving you guys something. I really hope y'all wrote down how important it is to forgive. Um, remember, your conscience is your referee in life. Don't forget how important it is to forgive daily. Um, make sure that when you're forgiving others, that you're forgiving them truly, truly forgiving them. Not just for forgiving them on the surface. Hey, Ron. Not just forgiving them on the surface, but really forgiving them. Forgiving them seriously and what that means is you are you are allowing the offense that happened and letting it go Okay, we had an offense it happened Let me remove my energy from that offense and let me allow it to just be gone. Let it dissipate You ain't got to keep putting energy and talking about it and calling them about it and talking to your friends about it and Telling your man about it that is putting energy in the offense which means you're really not forgiving and you're really not letting it go. You're just keeping the stuff going on. That's not real. The real true forgiveness is saying, I'm done. And in that, I'm going to have some compassion for you. I'm going to care about your well-being. I'm going to care about how you walk in life. That's what conscience is. I hope y'all got something today, man. I, I went in. I hope you guys took your notes. If you had not had a chance to catch the beginning of this, it is one of the most um, powerful episodes today I think I've done because I really want people to understand that always feeling good about who you are isn't necessarily to your betterment when you're feeling good about doing wrong, wrongful things to others. You need to have a conscience. You need to have some regrets. You need to be a little embarrassed. You need to feel like, man, I shouldn't have done that. Because if you don't, and you think it's okay to just be out here doing God knows what and to who and, and how and why. I mean, it's just, it's just not a good thing. All right? So I'm out of here, guys. Like I said, if you haven't had a chance yet to join my group, it's Live with Carla Nicole. Please, please, please send a request to be a part of that group. My group I take care of. I look out for them. I, um, I am part in them. We have video calls, we talk, we vibe. I have a wisdom focus group that I have that I'm about imparting and changing people's lives. That's what I'm here to do. That's my that's my spiritual mission. That's why I'm on the planet, just period. That's why I'm here. Um, and then if you haven't had a chance to uh, check out my blog, it's called In The Know on, on uh, WordPress. So make sure you go on there and, and like it and join it. I mean, you know, I, I do a lot of writing, a lot. Because, you know, a lot is on my heart and mind to say. But I just don't have the time to always go live. And so I only have 30 minutes on Sunday to go live and talk to you guys. But, you know, when I write, I write from the heart. And I try to give you guys some insight on what is really important. What is really we need to be doing when we're, when we're living in the best life. And we need to be the best version of ourselves. That's important. Let's be the best version of who we are while we're here. Because tomorrow is not promised. You know what I'm saying? Tomorrow's not promised. So we need to make sure that while we're here, we're taking care of other people. We're making other people be better because of us. I call people earth angels that are out here doing it. And I see quite a few earth angels on this call right here. I see you, Pete. I see you, Satori. I see you, Toon, Dietrich. All you guys, man, listen. Y'all are out here doing angel work. I call y'all the earth angels. Y'all doing what I'm doing. We're just trying to heal the planet. Because really, there's a lot of people that don't have a conscience. And that scares me. It really scares me. But for those of us that have a conscience, or we're not really good with monitoring our conscience, we just need to sharpen it. That's all. And once we do that, we'll get better. Alright, so I am out of here. I hope all of you guys have a beautiful Sunday. Um, coming up, I, if you guys don't know, I have a tour going on. I will be in ATL in October. I will be doing body work. I don't know if you guys know that I do 
energy body work if you guys are in the ATL Georgia Georgia area please let me know because I would love for you to uh, take advantage of my body work I will also be going to Jersey that'll be another place that I'm going so and I'm probably looking at um, going to um, Maryland uh, most likely in 2019 probably early 2019 so that's just a couple of places I plan on going so I like I said I just want you guys to definitely um, let me know if you guys want body work just let me know inbox me I'm here all right so everybody I love you guys have a beautiful beautiful Sunday and you guys take care it's Carla Nicole I'm signing off best kept have a good day bye